All right, all right, all right. Hello, hello. Good afternoon, good evening. Good afternoon, those on the West Coast. Good evening, those on the East Coast. Today is Finance Fridays, and we are talking about how to manage your business finances. I'm excited for today's lesson. Now, last Friday, we did our first um, Instagram Live for Finance Fridays. For those of you that are tuning in, we are going to be talking about how to manage your business finances and how to do that as a new business owner, new entrepreneur, or whether you're growing your company. Last Friday was our first live, and it was a great conversation, but I wanted to make sure this Friday we kind of touched on a lot of different topics that were very important in building the foundation for managing your business finances. So this Friday we have bullet points for those of you that are going to take notes. Um, I definitely suggest you to take out a pen and a piece of paper because today is going to be more of a lesson format for how to build a foundation to actually manage your business finances. For those of you that don't know, I think the, the number and the statistic is, and don't quote me, 90% of businesses fail. And the reason that 90%, the main reason that 90% of businesses fail is just simply because of managing their finances. A lot of them end up going bankrupt just for the simple fact that they weren't sure how to manage their finances and they weren't sure how to get to the next level, right? Even if they were generating income, they necessarily weren't doing it in a way to actually position the business to grow and to scale. So in order for us to do that today, we're going to talk about how we can avoid those type of mistakes and those type of um, errors for you guys while you're building your business. So let's get right into it. For those of you that don't know, quick introduction to myself. My name is Carmen Mohan and I own a tax and accounting firm based out of Long Island, New York. However, we are a virtual tax and accounting firm and we help small businesses start, build, and scale their companies here at our firm um, called Straight Tax. So let's get right into it. Hope you have your pens, papers. Today we're gonna go through a lot of information, right? There's some notes behind me and I'm gonna read all of them just so you guys can take notes as well and so the first step of managing your business finances and probably the most important is going to be to separate your personal and your business accounts and the reason you're going to want to do that is one for recording purposes and two for organizational purposes a lot of the times when business owners come to us during tax season they are almost never prepared and what I mean by that is that a lot of the times they don't have their income and expense reports generated. And so in order for them to, in order for any accountant, right, or any tax, any good tax accountant, in order for us to help you build your business, we first need to know kind of what, what we're working with, right? We need to know what your income and what your expenses look like so that we can help you build that foundation for your business and kind of take you from level one to level five to level 10. Your accountant and a good accounting firm is going to grow with you. So um, when you first step on to an accounting firm or if you can't afford an accounting firm as of yet because your business is you know, still on the rise and you're still trying to get things together, that's perfectly fine. The first step in managing your business finances and step number one is going to be to separate your personal income and expenses with your business income and expenses. So that's going to be step number one. Step number two is going to be to review and track all of your different income generating streams. For those of you that have been in business for six months, 12 months, 24 months, a lot of you guys have already started generating sales. Once you guys start generating sales, you guys have a lot of the time different ways that you guys earn money. Whether you're a service provider, you may have four different services. 
whether you have a digital product, you may have you know, a t-shirt and a hat. Whatever the case is, you want to record all of your income streams separately. And again, your accountant can help you with this, but if you are just starting out and you're trying to, let's say, earn your first, I don't know, $10,000 in revenue, then you're definitely gonna want to have an exact number account for what each service or what each product is bringing you in every month. And for those just starting out, when there's not a lot of transactions, I definitely advise for those newer business owners to definitely record every week, right? Um, you definitely gonna wanna know where is the money coming into the business? And not only where is it coming into, where is it coming in from? Is it coming in from this service and this product? Is it coming in from this service or is it coming in from this product? That's gonna give you a foundation, right? For recording your income streams. Then after that, once you guys start getting to a certain amount of revenue and investing in advertising and marketing, then the second level to that is we had sales coming in for this one specific service, but now we have some coming in from social media, some from our newsletters. So this way you can be able to track not only your income streams, but also what type of marketing strategies and tactics that you're currently using in your business and how much of a return on investment are you getting for these marketing strategies. So for those of you that are just starting out, um, I do have a link in my bio for when this live is over if you want to go visit my bio and there's a little there's a link that we have a free bookkeeping tool kind of just for starters for those of you that are looking for help and kind of documenting everything I'm going to talk about we have a free tool for you guys available to just start it to use it to start organizing one your different income streams and then what we're going to talk about next which is your expenses so um, you're definitely going to want to document all of your expenses, whether you're a new business owner or a seasoned business owner. If you are a seasoned business owner, you're definitely going to want to have some form of bookkeeping or accounting firm that you're working with set in place because your expenses is going to be the main, your main, um, if your expenses are going to be what's going to eat up the main money in your business, right? You have operating expenses. There are going to be expenses that need to be spent every month to, I don't know, keep the doors open, keep the lights on, keep staff on payroll. For those of you that are just starting out, a common mistake that I see for a lot of business owners is that they don't know what their current all-in cost is. And for those of you taking notes, I want you to um, definitely write that in. I need your business owners to start, especially the starter ones, to have an exact idea of what your current all-in costs are to date. And this you can do in our spreadsheet tool available in the link in our bio or in just a Google Sheet spreadsheet just to make it simple for yourself. You need to know come tax time when you sit down and you work with your accountant, you're going to need to know how much are you currently in the business all-in. Because a lot of the times I see small business owners and newer entrepreneurs, when they come during tax time, they tell us about a new business venture that they took on, but a lot of the times they never have an exact number for what they are all in. And you need to know that number because in business, we are in business to generate income, which then in turn can hopefully generate us a profit. If we don't understand what the number of, of the total all in cost is to us then we don't know what number we have to reach to zero us out to then start to hopefully run a profit a lot of the times you guys forget this very important part now a lot of us for new business owners this is another strategy for new business owners that are starting a business um, that is I find very useful if you have let's say you know um, different savings funds, or you have a nine to five job, or you have different income, let's say you have available to you, a lot of the times as a new business or a new business owner, and again, everyone's tax and income situation is different, but what you can do is provide a loan from yourself to your new company, 
And a lot of the times that new company, if this is structured correctly with the right paper trail to avoid an IRS audit, you can, I let's say I, Carmen Mohan, want to start a new cleaning business. I can write a loan from Carmen Mohan to my new cleaning business, let's say CM Cleaning, and I can give my business a loan of $5,000. And with the right proper, proper documentation in place, I can have a simple loan agreement, right? Um, and in that agreement, it can say, I, Carmen Mohan, am loaning $5,000 to CM Cleaning, and now CM Cleaning, in return, has to pay me my initial loan investment plus a 25% interest rate. As CM Cleaning starts to earn revenue, at some point, CM Cleaning is going to have to pay back Carmen Mohan, and I'm going to have to get my $5,000 of a loan, an initial loan, I'm going to have to pay back that initial loan as CM Cleaning, right? The entity CM Cleaning is going to have to pay back the initial loan to me, Carmen Mohan. And on top of that, have to pay me that 25% interest rate. On CM Cleaning side, all of that is tax deductible. On the Carmen Mohan side, I got my loan back, plus my, I paid myself back with interest. In the eyes of the IRS, this is 100% legal, and this is 100% used every day. When you start to operate your businesses, and you operate them as separate entities than yourself, you're able to strategize different ways to move money around and do it legally in the eyes of the IRS, while hopefully minimizing your own taxable income and playing the game of the wealth, right? The wealthy invest, and doesn't mean I have to, to be an investor, doesn't mean I have to just necessarily just invest in crypto or stocks. I can be the investor in my new business. My new business could then earn those earnings, pay me back and pay an interest back. So back to the initial point, let's talk about, we need to know exactly what our all in costs are for our business. And then when it's time to do our taxes, we definitely need to have that number ready and any a documentation that goes behind that number ready to be able to give to our tax accountants. Because it's important that a lot of times you'd be surprised how many business owners are afraid to even tell their tax preparer or tax accountant when they do their taxes, hey, I started a business this year and this is what happened. So I need you guys to be able to document what is your total all-in cost so that come tax time, you can give that information to your tax accountant. And if you're going to do the loan strategy, definitely want to document that as well so that you are in compliance with your IRS and state tax departments. Moving on to our next point is that you're going to want to get your monthly bookkeeping and accounting in place. Now, for a lot of new business owners, when they come on with one of our tax specialists here or one of our accountants, they think that the price of accounting is really expensive. And I understand that as a new business owner, it may be expensive. Whether you work with Straight Tax, our firm, or a whole nother firm, there are a couple notes I want you to take, whether you even try to do your own accounting on your own. What you need to keep in mind is why do businesses need accounting? Now, if we know that in the beginning of this live, I said that 90% of businesses fail due to miss money management, then we need to have our accounting in place in order to understand, number one, if you're taking notes, write this down, what are our financial obligations? And then number two, we need to be able to make educated decisions on how to grow. You would be surprised how many business owners invest in new marketing strategies, you know, new freelancers, all of these new things, but they haven't properly budgeted it out or they don't even necessarily understand if they can afford this. Just because you have, let's say, $10,000 in your bank account and your business bank account, does that mean you can just afford to bring anyone on? When you have your accounting in place, whether you do it yourself, you work with us at Straight Tax, or you work with a different firm, what you need to understand is the importance of why accounting is important. And that's because once you have your accounting in place, you're going to have the proper documentation to order to read, right, the financial stats of what's going on in your business. Every
every month, you should then review this accounting at the end of the month or the beginning of the month for the previous month. And this data, this information, is gonna tell you a couple different things that's really important for you to know. One, it's going to tell you what your monthly expenses are, down to the dollar. Even with the bank, when they, when they charge you $5, even with those little petty um, subscriptions you have, it's going to give you all of your expenses. So at the end of the month, once you review that, you can go ahead and eliminate the things that you don't need as your expenses. Then two, it's going to tell you what your net income is. For those of you that are writing notes, you need to understand what your net income is because then you're gonna start understanding over the course of three, six, or nine months what your cash revenue, what your cash flow is available for growth and expansion. Um, once you're reviewing your monthly bookkeeping and your monthly um, profit and loss statement, it's gonna tell you your total expenses and it's gonna tell you your net income. Now, for those of you that are thinking, hey, Carmen, my business has now generated sales three, six, nine months. How do I pay myself? Great question. What we tell business owners here that work with us at our firm is to wait till your profit, right? That monthly end net income number. Let's wait till at least you have three months of being profitable or six months of being profitable, depending on your industry. We'll wait until that third or sixth month and then you can pay yourself your first payment and either pay yourself weekly or bi-weekly and we'll start with a very low salary amount to start paying yourself as an employee. After all, you are the one running your business. So that means you are your main employee. If you're the one doing all the customer support, um, issuing invoices, shopping for inventory, paying all the bills, all of these things that you're doing, you are actually an employee of your business. But what you don't wanna do is pay yourself too far in advance and start taking out some of the cash reserves that's in, that's, that's in the company before you can actually get it profitable, right? And for those of you that say, well, hey, it may take me a year to become profitable, there, there's other ways around that but you will be able to become profitable sooner once you start to analyze all of your income and expenses monthly and then quarterly to see how you can grow. And I've, and I've noticed that those businesses that actually invest in monthly accounting, they grow at a faster rate because they're not worried about the numbers part of it. They really spend, they have the guidance on the money management and the numbers part of it. And they really just focus their time on generating sales. So definitely a good thing to keep in mind. So that was our next point is to get your monthly accounting and, and bookkeeping in place. And then the point after that that we kind of just jumped to automatically was setting yourself up to pay yourself. Now, a lot of people ask questions about, hey, how do I pay myself as an entrepreneur, as a small business owner, and as an employee? Great question. Now, um, a lot of us, there's three different ways to really pay ourselves. Depending on what type of corporate structure your company has, is going to determine what type of payments you're going to issue to yourself, right? So, if you're an LLC, you're going to probably issue yourself just a regular payment and you can either pay yourself as an employee or as a 1099 independent contractor, which either which way, once you file your taxes, they kind of come out to be both the same thing. If you're now generating higher net income and higher profits, I know you guys probably hear online all the time, become a S corporation, elect your LLC to become an S corporation. It's in order to minimize the self-employment tax. And yes, that is definitely what you're going to want to do. But where a lot of business owners get this wrong at is that they're not doing it at the right time. You have to do it at the right time that is specific to your tax situation. We can tell business owners, once you generate $50,000 in income, that could be the time for you to start, to th start thinking about putting yourself on salary. But we can also say to a business owner, once you generate $50,000 in profit, 
then we may have another business owner that also works a W-2 job and he makes $100,000 in his W-2 job and now starts a business. That situation for that new business owner that now owns $100,000, that now generates $100,000 on his W-2 income or income earning job, his tax situation is going to look a lot different from someone that works at a job that they make $30,000 and they're single versus the one that's married and maybe makes $100,000. So in his case, he's not he's going to want to start out in a different corporate structure than someone that is just, you know, just making let's say a, a middle income, middle class income living. So it's definitely important we do pay attention and learn the tax code and minimizing our tax liabilities. But I want you guys to take notice the information that you receive on the internet may not be in specific to your tax situation. And that's why when you guys start seeing information from good tax accountants, what they're gonna tell you is this advice may or may not pertain to you depending on your financial status, right? What your household income earns and what your filing status is, is all going to determine on what your tax, uh, what your total tax rate is, right? What percentage you're taxed. So all of those factors play in when, and when now you're starting to have a business on the side, once you... Um, now because this business becomes profitable you need to understand you're paying that taxes on that new business profit on top of what you're already earning in your regular nine to five job so it's very important for you to guys to take notes and understand but always consult with the tax accountant or CPA to make sure that you're making the right decisions for yourself and your specific tax obligations so, taxes was last on my list, but somehow just slipped his way in there. Um, next, after you pay yourself, we're talking about paying ourselves. After you pay yourself as an employee, when should you make your first payment? I would say three months or six months after you've already generated a monthly profit. That's a good starting place for you to make your first payment to yourself or if we use the loan method for you to start paying back that loan to yourself. Now, in, the, in regards to how much you should pay yourself, you're always going to want to start with a lower um, decent, in the eyes of the IRS they call it decent, you're always gonna wanna start with a lower decent wage so that you can um, make sure not to you know, dump out all of the business's cash reserves. You definitely want to make sure that the business has cash in the business bank account to start to generate a profit. Once you have actual sales and now let's say you're now business is booming. Let's say now you're making $5,000 a month. Your business only needs $2,500 a month to survive. Now you have 2,500 of profit. On the third month of 2,500 of profit, it may either go up your profit numbers or it may go down. Business is not guaranteed every month, especially when you're just starting out. And when I say just starting out, I mean your first three years. So it's not really guaranteed. You're going to see ups and downs and some businesses inflate in a really, really short amount of time. And I know you see those business owners with those headlines of, hey, I made seven figures in the first 12 months. And that's great and I'm so happy for them. But as an accountant and as someone who, who over the course of my career has witnessed hundreds of different business corporate accounts, it is not the norm, right? So here, I'm going to be realistic and help you in your current situation where you are today. So realistically speaking, it's going to take us some time to generate revenue and get profitable. But on that third month of being profitable, issuing ourselves that first payment is going to be what we call practical. We want to make that practical payment because guess what? Once you now start paying yourself weekly and the business can still survive and maintain an average of net income monthly, that means you're doing the right thing. 
So after, let's say, three months of them paying yourself, now what you're going to want to do is create, open another business account. Once you start paying yourself weekly on a salary and you have months, three, six months of paying yourself weekly, on top of you have now an average of income coming in and an average of net income, meaning you still have cash after all your expenses. Once you get to three or six months consistent of that, that's when you can start preparing yourself for growth. And hey, the next question I get is, hey Carmen, how do I start preparing my business for now the growth side of things? And great question. What you're gonna wanna do next is then open another business account. And for those of you taking notes, preferably a business savings account. For this second business account, I don't want it to be a checking account because I want you not to be able to withdraw as easily, number one. And number two, when you open the business savings account, I want you to open a high yield savings account. And what I mean by that is since we're going to start holding money in this account, we want it to be interest bearing. So we want it to grow with interest. After three to six months of paying ourselves consistently and getting a consistent net income, now is when it starts getting a little fun, what I like to say. And how it's going to get fun is that now we're going to try to focus on getting to the next level, right? And how we start to get to the next level is going to be in implementing certain strategies for growth. But first, we have to have our accounting records in place, our bookkeeping in place, and we have to have them paying ourselves consistently. And the reason why those two things need to be put into place is because we need to have a strong foundation for our business and our business's finances before we can start investing in growth meaning team members, staff, payroll, freelancers, meaning marketing, meaning Facebook ads, meaning advertising. Advertising can be in the form of signage, it could be in the form of flyers, it could be in the form of things that are more so old school. Marketing can be in the form of digital marketing, right? So in order to make an educated guess on what our budgets can be, that's where having the foundation in place is going to come in handy. And moving forward, now that we have the second business account, after we have six months, excuse me, after we have six months, let's say, paying ourselves, generating gross revenue, generating net, net, um, net profit, right? We're not under every month. We have six consistent months of whatever we started at increasing you know or at least keeping an average now what we're going to want to do at month six for those of you writing it down month six of consistently paying ourselves and consistently generating a profit on our business what we can do is at month six the profits from that month and the additional six months of the year month seven eight nine and ten we're going to put that into now another account over here. This is the business savings account. This business savings account is going to be what our account is used for growth. We want to be able to have a separate account so that we can start uh, taking into account what we need to grow, right? What we need as far as staff, what we need as far as investment, what we need as far as marketing. Not only that, at some point, we're going to need to start putting money on the side for taxes if we're business owners, right? For those of you that don't know, when it comes to owning your own business, we pay taxes based on the amount of profits that our business has incurred. Now, there's a lot of hearsay on the internet to you know, purchase a vehicle under the business and to do all of these things to maximize your tax deductions. And yes, that is sound advice. However, it is a detriment to your business if you are not prepared to do so. 
it is very easy to bankrupt a business if you start spend overly spending in expenses especially stuff like cars and all of this additional things it's it's going to be a detriment of your business because you're going to find it harder to earn a profit if you're just spending and spending and spending. So you definitely want to make sure your business gets a strong foundation, especially if you plan on being in business for 5, 10, and 15 years. If in your first five years, all you're doing is racking up business credit, racking up debt, buying cars under your business, and doing all of this uh, uh, business Twitter advice, then what's going to happen is, is you're going to find it very difficult to start earning a profit. And if you have a business on the side and you're working your 9 to 5, your goal of being a business is to eventually quit your 9 to 5, isn't it? If that's your goal, then you have to get your business profitable enough to be able to pay you a decent living salary so that you can leave your full-time job and then run your business full-time. But that takes time. So in the meantime, I suggest as an accountant that you keep your nine to five job, minimize all of your expenses, build and invest into your business, whether you're loaning yourself the first business income, paying yourself back, or if you just let the business operate on its own, wait till it's three to six months profitable, then start paying yourself, then have the second additional account to then start racking up all of additional income that your business makes for six months. And you'll notice that in the uh, initial um, in the initial example I used, I said $2,500 of profit. Six months of $2,500 worth of profit is going to equal to an additional Six months of $2,500 is going to equal an additional, I don't know, $15,000 that you now have put to the side in your business savings. And in your first and second year of generating profits, that extra $15,000 can now go to, let's say, $5,000 will go to your taxes. And now you may have an additional $10,000 to actually reinvest back into the business and you want to make sure that you reinvest that additional money on the side. You want to make sure that you reinvest that back into the business before the end of the tax year so that you're not due to pay taxes on that extra amount of profit that you put to the side. If you work with a tax accountant, chances are they're going to, hey, ping you, hey, it's time to do this, hey, it's time to do that, hey, on this month's call, we're going to review this. And this way, you can't forget, hey, if you put an additional $15,000 off on your side business savings account, you're going to want to make sure, if you are going to reinvest into your business, to do so at the end of the year so that it is not, that extra profit that you put to the side is not going to be included in the amount of profits that you have to pay taxes on. And this is a great way to, number one, build a strong foundation for your business. Number two, ensure you get your business to be profitable. And then number three, have a practical strategy on how to build your business savings and then have money or a budget, have the amount of budget in place to add employees, freelancers, marketing, advertising, or just simply might be moving to a better location. It might be you need to invest in different tech tools and tech stacks. I know that since, and just within our business, since COVID started, we've invested you know tens of thousands of dollars of re-strategizing all our tech tools and our internal processes tools because we wanna make sure that we're efficiently growing with the curve, the digital curve, right? And that's why I've been so quiet behind the scenes because we've done so much of the hard work over the course from beginning of 2020 to now to be a virtual firm, all these tech tools, all these things, we were able to do so. So I want the same for you and your business. And again, for those of you that are just tuning in, we're talking about building um, and managing your business finances. And we went over some great key points 
So if you're just tuning in, make sure you go ahead and watch the video at a later point in time because today's lesson was amazing. Every Friday, we're going to be doing this right here for the next, until the end of the year, until tax season. Every Friday, I'm going to come on here and I'm going to talk about how to manage your business finances. And for the first few Fridays, we're going to just talk about laying the foundation. But I think next Friday or the Friday after, I want to um, go ahead and talk about different things for all of the hearsay, right? The, the business Twitter information we hear online. So I think next Friday or the, or the Friday following, I'm going to talk about business credit and how that plays into accounting. There is business credit is amazing and there's a lot of good uses for it. However, a common part that I'm seeing on the back end of looking at these business financial reports is that they're just racking up a bunch of debt and they're not properly educating themselves on what that looks like tax time, number one, and two, what is it doing for their profit growth, right? What is it doing for the growth of their business or their profit margins? So every Friday, Finance Friday, today's lesson, we went through 10 points. Uh, we kind of uh, sped past the last three, but I'm going to go ahead, 740, I'm going to go ahead and answer some of the questions. And if you have a question, drop it in the comments. Let's see. What do you think is a good app to use to track spending gas miles? I think a good application to do so is QuickBooks. QuickBooks makes it really easy. Um, QuickBooks Online has a mobile application that you just turn it on and you connect it to your GPS and it automatically tracks the mileage. Now, that's actually a great question. Um, for those of you that know, you know, your vehicle is going to be one of the bigger expense expenses that you can write off on your business um, but a lot of people think they can use you know their monthly payment and insurance payment and mileage so a lot of the times IRS tax law says you can only do one or the other you can only either record all of your business mileage or you can record your monthly payments now there's other things that we can use like a section 179 deduction to, rec to um, deduct the an entire cost of the asset if your business is properly purchased, um, if your, I'm sorry, if your vehicle is properly purchased under the business, there are bigger write-offs that we can use. And those are different strategies that I would love to teach you guys, but I want you guys to implement them at the right time. If you implement big deductions in the beginning of your company or your first three years, then you're gonna you're gonna find it harder to actually run a profit on your business, and you're gonna find it harder to be able to pay yourself a weekly or yearly salary and actually either leave your nine to five job or replace it. Right? I know that a lot of business owners, especially new ones, are looking to replace their nine to five jobs. And in order for you to do that, you're going to start with a you're gonna to need to start with a lean business model. And what I mean by lean is as much income as possible and as minimal expenses as possible. And the reason you're gonna to wanna to do that is because in order for your business to start to sustain a living salary for you, then you're going to need to strategize that foundation piece and plus make sure you're making your business as profitable as possible. So then you can put yourself on a salary, pay the federal withholdings, strategize it all legally, and then you can um, replace your nine to five working salary. Great question. Next question, the video will be posted? Yes, it will. As soon as we get off in 15 minutes, the video will be posted. You talked about adding money to the business. I did, I talked about um, uh, issuing a loan to a new business by yourself as the loaner and the business as the payee. This way the business will then owe you money plus interest. It is very important if you're going to take this strategy to do so with the right documentation because if there 
is an audit that takes place, IRS is going to expect to see documentation. But as per IRS tax law, this is 100% legal to do so. All right, is there a particular quarter that is best? You would need to elaborate on that question. A particular quarter that is best for what? Appreciate you. Oh, welcome. Okay, so I'm going to leave the floor open for a few more minutes. <coughs> Excuse me. For questions. Does anyone have questions on any of the things that we discussed today? Raise your hand if there's any tax pros currently on this live. Just a quick announcement, if you are a tax pro and you are on this live and you have been watching me, listen, I'm having a webinar next week. It's link invitation only to all tax pros that are looking to build your business. They are looking to build and scale your tax business. Whether you're a new tax preparer or you've been in the industry for five to 10 years and you just don't feel like it's been lucrative for you, we're doing a webinar next week, um, next Thursday evening, I believe. We're gonna post a flyer once this upcoming week um, and it's definitely specifically just for tax pros. Listen, we did all the hard work with uh, getting things together on the back end operational wise. Um, I definitely want to help you guys out, but it is a link invitation only thing. But for those small business owners, I'm glad you guys tuned in. I hope you guys enjoyed this live. And if you do watch this later down the line and have any questions, feel free to either leave a comment on this video or jump in my DM and ask us a question. For next Finance Fridays, we're going to talk about managing your business. But I think next week, we're going to focus on paying yourself and also minimizing your debt. So for the next, I don't even know how many weeks we have to the end of the year, but we're going to be doing these Finance Fridays every Friday, 7 p.m. for you small business owners. And how to manage your business finances, our topics are broad, right? Today, we did a little bit of a structural foundation thing but we can talk hours about managing your business finances because if your business has over six figures of revenue what you're going to do to manage your finances is going to look a lot more complex than these 10 steps because in that sense then you have a lot more different um financial reports that you're going to pull and read through and so on and so forth so definitely going to want you guys to um definitely going to want you guys to stay tuned Every Friday, same day, same time. I'm not going to have a life for the next few Fridays just so I can go ahead and be available to you guys, help teach and guide you guys. And for those of you that are looking for more specific help to your specific financial situation, feel free to reach out to us at, at Straight Tax. We have uh, discovery calls available for clients that are looking to um, possibly onboard an accountant. In our discovery call, we'll go through some questions and see if you're a good fit for us or if we're a good fit for you, right? Because you may be looking for an accountant, but you may not necessarily need it. Or you may be looking for an accountant and you may not be a good fit or we may not be a good fit. So that's what we have discovery calls for. Hope everyone enjoys the rest of their day and have a great weekend.